Hello and welcome back to my channel. Uh, I posted a couple of weeks ago my video on the torch height control on my plasma cutter and I had a lot of comments and a lot of requests to ask how did I build it and uh, what parts and pieces it would take to, to manufacture it. So I'm going to run through that here now. Uh, I'm going to provide a diagram that will make it easier to understand how to wire it up. But I'm going to try to explain it as best I can without getting too complicated as to what's going on. So that if you do want to try building this, uh, it is very inexpensive. Uh, aside from the uh, plasma cutter itself and the, and the laser cutter I started with, the torch head control is completely self-contained, requires no software, it's simple relay logic uh, with some triggered inputs from some proximity sensors. So uh, I want to go through and explain how that all works. Uh, but before I get into that, I want to um, just mention that I found out a few weeks back before I started this project that you can actually run a stepper motor on just AC current. I didn't know that uh, until I uh, watched a few videos and people showing how it happens. Um, the way most stepper motors are made, they have two field coils in here, uh, and depending on which one gets fired when from a uh, circuit board or a stepper driver, um, it increments the, the stepper around. That's why it has kind of a ratcheting feel to it if you manually turn them. So what you can do is, since there's two field coils, you basically series them together, uh, com completing making it uh, one long circuit. But what happens is you put a capacitor at the junction point of the, the two field coils. And then depending on which leg you short that to of your AC power, reverses the direction of the stepper motor. And you'll see that in just a minute. So that's what I've done here. The, um, the red and the black are one field coil. The green and blue are another field coil. Um, actually, no, I take that back. Um, it's the uh, red and blue and the green and black are the coils. So. What I've done, and I'll, maybe you can see this, maybe not, um, the green and blue are, are twisted together, and then they go to one leg of this capacitor. And then what happens is, to make the stepper motor run in reverse, you need to flip-flop which um, AC leg the capacitor shorts against. So what happens here is, I've got the capacitor's um, open leg or, or uh, bare leg in the common position, and then the, uh, the AC field... Uh, connections to, uh, you, you hook one leg of your AC to the remaining lead of one coil and the other AC to the other leg of the other remaining coil uh, and then what happens is you just flip the relay back and forth and it'll reverse direction of the motor. Now how I'm making that happen with the torch height control is there's two sensors. Sensor one, all it does is it, it's powered all the time from this bridge rectifier and it takes the 12 volts and it when it senses metal, it sends that 12 volts to the input 1 on the circuit board or the relay board. That fires relay 1. And what that does is, when I turn the torch light controller powered up, it's always running in the down direction. Until it senses metal, then sensor 1 shut, or turns on relay 1. And all that does is it opens up the normally closed contacts, which are feeding power to the motor, essentially acting like a light switch turning off the motor. Then as the, the metal comes closer and it hits sensor 2, sensor 1 is still active, keeping the power off to the motor. But sensor 2 takes that uh, its input and it fires relays 2. And I also have it jumped over on the inputs to fire relay 3. So input 1 fires relay 1. Input 2 is actually 2 and 3 firing relays 2 and 3. Uh, relay 2 being the one that reverses the direction of the uh, stepper motor with the capacitor. And relay 3, I take the normally open contacts of that relay and I parallel them to the normally closed contacts of relay 1. So essentially what happens is, as the metal gets close, relay 1 shuts it off, stops it moving. When it gets closer still to the second sensor, sensor 1 is still on, sensor 2 picks it up, and then that reverses the motor direction, but it also, because it's tied to relay 3, it supersedes or takes the... the shunting off of relay one. So it basically parallels it but in the other in the other um, or, or um, polarity. So it's normally open to normally closed which essentially gives power back to the motor but now it's running in the opposite direction. So 
I know that's a, it seems complicated, or maybe it's not. It's um, it, it's it, when you see it, it makes sense. But to just talk about it, it's probably a bit confusing. But the diagram will probably help you understand it. And now I'm just going to show you how it works. Uh, so as you can see, the stepper motor is not moving. I'm just going to power everything up. So that's just 12 volts AC, and it's coming into the bridge rectifier. And it is also feeding into this circuit board for the 12 volts DC. So that's all being fed from the rectifier. The 12 volts AC goes in right to relay uh, 2 as each side of the, the field coils of the stepper motor. So I'm just going to take this metal putty knife and I'm just going to bring it in con or close proximity. And I'll, I'm going to raise this up a little bit so you can see the LEDs. As I bring it closer, the, uh, the first sensor picks it up and stops the motor in its tracks. If I raise it higher still, now it, it uh, reverses the direction of the motor and turns the power back on. And as I pull it away, it stops, push it closer, it stop, or it starts, pull it away all the way, and now because neither sensor is being picked up, it keeps running down. So the whole idea is once you get your height set just where you want it, the, um, the whole torch head should stay fluttering in between those two sensor pickup points. So if that makes sense to everybody, you'll see the relays coming on and you'll see what the motors are doing. So anyway, that's that's how the torch height control works. Um, so far I've done several hours of cutting and it, it works quite well. The only part you have to be cognizant of is if you look at the gap or the distance between the the torch tip itself and the sensors, obviously there's an inch and a half or so gap there. You always have to make sure that there's metal in front of your torch because if there's not, um, you know, conceivably the torch could continue to go down. Like if you, uh, if this was an opening or that it cut out a big hole and the uh, the, the sensors weren't there, it could conceivably keep pushing down because it's waiting to try to get to some metal. So I've just learned to cut from uh, back to front so there's always fresh metal underneath where the sensors are. Uh, and the other thing is if you can support your workpiece so that the um, that there's always metal underneath of it. Uh, I've already done plenty of cuts where the uh, it had already cut an area and then it passed back over it. As long as the metal's there, the kerf width doesn't seem to affect the torch I control so uh, it just it just seems to work so um, I hope you liked the video again there's going to be a description that has the all the parts in it that you need if you want to try to make this yourself um, but outside of that you know I hope you enjoyed it and uh, please like and subscribe I'd like to put out more videos I just uh, I hope to see you soon thanks